We're joined now by two people who've been debating in Parliament for more than a quarter of a century. Lord Heseltine served in the Thatcher and major cabinets of the 1980s, 1990s, became Deputy Prime Minister, First Secretary of State, worked as an advisor to the coalition and Conservative governments before being sacked earlier this month after rebelling over the Article 50 bill in the House of Lords. Kate Hoey entered the Commons in 1989, the, a Labour MP and one-time Minister of Sport. As a Eurosceptic and Libertarian, she has frequently voted against her party and was co-chair of the Labour Leave campaign. Michael Hesitine, you're an old war horse, I could say. Yeah. What happens next? Well, as I understand it, the letter under Article 50 will be delivered tomorrow. But as you, somebody and who is passionate about remaining in Europe, is it all over? Oh, no. The letter will represent the biggest sacrifice of British sovereignty that I can remember. And what's now going to happen is that the Europeans will tell us the conditions on which we can trade with our biggest market. And when that becomes apparent, all the stuff about gaining sovereignty, putting ourselves in charge, will be exposed for the hypocrisy that it was. You see, what's happening tomorrow is the one thing that Margaret Thatcher was frightened of, is losing control over the conditions in which British companies, our trade and industry, actually operate in our biggest market. That's what tomorrow represents. It is the biggest sacrifice of British self-interest I know of. Supposing you're wrong? Well, if I'm wrong, the uh, events will unfold. But uh, what's going to happen tomorrow is that the old airy phrases about money being released, about 350 million a day to the health service, all that stuff, the bus, do you remember, that's going to be replaced by the hard, factual reality. Don't you the think Europeans this... are going to tell us the conditions on which we can trade in our biggest market. But there are some who really believe that, that Europe was an elitist operation and that, in fact, in the end, you know, the comfortably off have done well, but there are still a great lump and number of people who are really left without. Well, I hitchhiked round Europe in the 1950s. I saw what Europe was like. I have some idea of what this country was like. And although we've gone through nearly a decade of frozen living standards, there is no comparison with the conditions that existed in Europe 20, 30, 40 years ago. It's, there are problems, there are always problems in politics. But the fact of the matter is that the European unity has achieved peace, it's achieved democracy, it's got rid of the fascists in Spain and Portugal, it's got rid of the colonels in Greece, and we relatively are prosperous. And why do I say that? Why do you think all these immigrants are coming here? Because we are amongst the most prosperous parts of the world. Uh, Kate Hoey, um, what do you think happens tomorrow? Well, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I think the public will be delighted that finally we're going to be able to get on with actually beginning these negotiations. And I think, you know, the more that people go on and say about how the EU countries are going to treat us, the more I think that the public will think, well, thank goodness we're actually voted to leave because, you know, you can't be part of an organisation that is seriously going to try and punish us. And I, I'm very confident about our negotiations because, you know, the EU need us as much as we need them. But and clearly, we have an opportunity now to be even better off longer term. Better off the without moment. Northern Ireland? without Scotland? Well, I mean, those are two... I think the reality is of Scotland, that would be happening whatever. Brexit is just an excuse, and, and I understand the Scottish leader why she's doing it now, but, you know, I don't think Theresa May will give in on that. On Northern Ireland, you know, let's... Well, will not... it matter if Scotland breaks away? Do you mind? Well, I, I'm very supportive. Really I support... No, no, no I Labour MPs are I there. support the United Kingdom. <clears throat> um, I'd like to see it stay. But ultimately, you know, there will be but another referendum in Scotland. But we're seeing real change Scotland. in Northern Ireland. I mean... Well, I think, no, I think, you know, remember the, the vote in Northern Ireland on Brexit was only was much smaller actually the, the gap than people had thought it would but be. But it isn't that and is it what's happened yes, since but, the, the South is now saying they would well, welcome I'm, Northern Ireland. I'm on the Northern Ireland Select Committee. We were over in Dublin last week and we talked to the the Irish senators and so on. They want to see no end to uh, you know no borders coming up again. They really want to work with us. The problem again is that the European Union tries to interfere and will even if you know the Republic of Ireland would like to be much more supportive, but the EU there 
they're fearful because they're part of the 27th. But you must admit, we have no idea what is actually going to happen to these nations. If it, it is possible Scotland could break away, and it is possible that no, Northern Ireland I, will go with the South. Uh, look, I know lots of people in Northern Ireland who voted to remain. That doesn't mean to say that they're going to vote to be part of a united Ireland. They're very proud of being British. They may have supported remain. I don't think that's an issue at all. I really don't. Isn't the truth here that we've got two politicians, seasoned politicians, who actually have no idea how good or bad it's actually going to be? Well, I feel that, it, that we, we are going to get back control of our economics again. You feel, again. But you don't know. Well, no one, of course, knows what we're going to end up, other than that we're going to be out of the single, the internal market, we're going to be out of the customs mm. union, and we're going to be able to make trade deals with the rest of the world. I'm positive. Let's stop being... All, you know, I'm so fed up with everyone mm. being so negative about well, this. This is a real but opportunity. But you'd agree, nobody actually it's knows. It's a real opportunity. No, you, you made a very important point. Kate doesn't know, I don't know, but it's much worse. The three ministers in charge don't know. One of the reasons I was so keen that they should be put in charge, and I said this long before Theresa May was Prime Minister, is because I thought at least they'd be able to tell us what the options are. And all we get now is endless comments in the national press saying that the three of them are fighting each other day by day. Do you have confidence in Theresa May's government? <laughs> Do you have confidence in Theresa May's government? I have no confidence in the decision to rupture our relationship with our allies on the continent of Europe. Full stop. And nor did Mrs May in April of last year when she made a reasoned, logical speech setting out precisely why Britain is self-interested. And, and we're going time. to have a great relationship with the rest of the EU. They, okay, they play fair with us, we play fair with them.